My name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on the subject of caffeine and its effects on the heart. Now, there is a perception amongst healthcare professionals and patients that the ingestion of caffeine can trigger off heart rhythm disturbances. And this leads to an almost universal recommendation whenever a patient goes to their doctor with palpitations. In this uh, video, I wanted to look at uh, what evidence is out there to support this recommendation. The first thing to say is caffeine is a stimulant. It is uh, found in a variety of different concentrations in many commercially available beverages. These include uh, coffee, uh, tea, green tea, black tea, soda, so Coca-Cola, that kind of thing, and also energy drinks. To give you an idea, a 375 ml can of Coca-Cola would probably contain about 32 milligrams of caffeine. A cup of green tea would contain about 35 milligrams of caffeine. A cup of coffee would probably contain about 95 milligrams of caffeine. An espresso shot, espresso shot would probably contain about 106 milligrams of caffeine. And a lot of energy drinks can contain up to 500 milligrams of caffeine. Caffeine has a half-life of 5.7 hours. Uh, it reaches maximum concentrations within an hour of consumption and it is nearly 100% bioavailable, so everything you drink in gets into your system. Caffeine has four main effects on our heart, okay? Two of them can be proarrhythmic, can trigger off heart rhythm disturbance, and two of these effects can actually be antidysrhythmic, which means reduce the chances of heart rhythm disturbances. And I'll go through with them one by one. The first thing is that caffeine has a sympathomimetic effect, meaning that it causes sympathetic activation. It causes our flight or fright response to build up. If you give someone 250 milligrams of caffeine, their adrenaline levels will go up by about 207%. Their noradrenaline levels will go up by 75%. At very, very high doses, caffeine is proarrhythmic, and this has been shown in rat models where rats were fed a very, very high concentrations of caffeine, and they developed arrhythmias, and they actually developed ventricular fibrillation and died. So certainly in rat models, it seems that very high levels of caffeine can be very dangerous. Another uh, effect that caffeine has is that it increases the amount of calcium within our cells. It increases our heart rate by both its sympathetic activation and also by increasing the levels of calcium within our cells. So those are two of the causes by which caffeine can be proarrhythmic, can trigger off heart rhythm disturbances. However, caffeine has an inhibitory effect on our adenosine receptors. So we have adenosine receptors within the heart. Adenosine itself can trigger things like atrial fibrillation. So caffeine, um, because it inhibits these adenosine receptors, actually could possibly have an antiarrhythmic effect as well. Finally, caffeine is an antioxidant. Antioxidants can sometimes be very helpful in reducing heart rhythm, heart muscle irritability. So those are two things. It's um, effects on the adenosine receptor and the fact that it's an antioxidant. They're both, um, they both have anti-dysrhythmic effects, uh, the sympathetic activation, and the increase in the amount of calcium uh, can both make it proarrhythmic. So I'm going to talk about the different heart rhythm disturbances to try and see if there's any evidence which has been shown to actually to tell us what effect caffeine has on heart rhythm disturbances. You know, what does the research tell us? So if we look at atrial dysrhythmias, these are atrial tachycardia, atrial ectopy, atrial fibrillation, lab-based experimental studies have failed to show a consistent relationship between caffeine and the development of atrial dysrhythmias or the inducibility of atrial dysrhythmias. Population studies have actually shown that you get a reduction in the amount of atrial fibrillation with ingestion of caffeine. There was one interesting study in which they looked at 57,000 patients or participants and they found that those people who drank coffee actually had a lower incidence of atrial fibrillation. So very interesting. There have been about 11 major studies. They've studied around almost 350,000 participants. And only in one very small study was it found that the coffee was actually detrimental to atrial dysrhythmias, which is, again, really interesting and points to this antioxidant effect and the effect it has on adenosine receptors. In three studies um, of these 11 studies, it was shown that actually coffee reduced atrial dysrhythmias. In the rest, there was no real benefit or harm. 
It's worth noting that what uh, we get from studies may not necessarily apply to the individual patient because I recently put a poll on my Facebook page asking patients who had atrial fibrillation. I said, look, you know, do you find that coffee is a trigger for atrial fibrillation? I got about 600 answers and 45% of patients said yes, coffee did trigger off the atrial fibrillation. So that's again interesting, you know, what we read in uh, publications may not necessarily apply to the individual, which is again really interesting. And I think that if the patient has noticed a temporal relationship, a close temporal relationship between coffee and heart palpitations, then it's obviously best to avoid drinking the coffee or caffeine, uh, irrespective of what the research shows because, you know, why do you want the symptoms? What about ventricular dysrhythmias? What is the effect of coffee on ventricular dysrhythmias? And uh, there is really, again, no good evidence which points to the fact that coffee increases uh, ventricular dysrhythmias like ventricular ectopy, ventricular tachycardia, etc. There have been almost uh, five placebo-controlled studies, again, small studies, which have shown that even drinking up to six cups of coffee per day didn't seem to trigger off heart rhythm disturbances coming from the ventricle. So again, really interesting. Um, there are some very old small studies which suggested that if you drank more than nine cups of coffee a day, then there was a propensity to having more ventricular dysrhythmias. But in moderate quantities, coffee doesn't seem to trigger off ventricular dysrhythmias as the research suggests. So what about tea? Uh, tea also contains caffeine. Tea contains less caffeine than coffee. The question really that I wanted to try and look into was does tea increase the risk of heart rhythm disturbances? Tea um, contains, as I say, less ca caffeine, but is rich in something called EGCG. EGCG stands for something called epigallo catechinate gallate. I have no idea, but this is what EGCG stands for. And this compound um, has anti-inflammatory effects. In fact, they gave a bunch of uh, rabbits this compound and they found those rabbits got less AF compared to rabbits who weren't given this compound. There have been some studies, small case control studies, that the ingestion of green tea in particular is actually beneficial for episodes of AF. It reduces AF and it also reduces ventricular dysrhythmias. There was one study where they looked at all the studies to do with tea and they found that if you drank three cups of tea a day, green tea a day, there was a lower risk of cardiac death. So that's again interesting. Finally, what about energy drinks. Now, energy drinks, as I say, contain so much more caffeine than coffee or anything else. The problem with energy drinks is that they have a lot of other energy boosting substances. So they'll have sugar, they'll have ephedra, they'll have guarana, they'll have yohimbin. And therefore, there's a much higher risk of causing heart rhythm disturbances. Energy drinks are often taken with alcohol, they're taken with illicit drugs, and this makes for a very unhealthy combination. There are lots of case reports now coming out that the uh, ingestion of, of energy drinks increases heart rhythm disturbances, increases uh, ectopics, increases the presence of atrial fibrillation, supraventricular tachycardia, and even ventricular tachycardia. In fact, 75% of patients who have had more than two energy drinks in a day will complain of palpitations compared to those who've had less than two energy drinks in a day. In addition, it's worth knowing that, the, uh, that energy drinks have been associated with prolongation of the QTC interval. Remember, when the QTC interval goes up, there's a much higher risk of heart rhythm disturbances and very dangerous heart rhythm disturbances. There's some note that energy drinks can unmask conditions like the Brugada syndrome, again, a potentially very, very dangerous lethal condition. We also have, are beginning to see that energy drinks can actually trigger off a pro-coagulable state so they can actually increase the clotting of the body, promoting blood clots. And that again points to this real worry about energy drinks. So in summary, what I would say is that it appears that coffee is probably okay in moderate quantities. Tea is probably beneficial in moderate quantities. The energy drinks are probably harmful even in moderate quantities. So I think the first thing to say again is I would 
highly recommend that you pay attention to your own triggers and you say that, okay, well, if I do this, this happens, so I'm not going to do it. When it comes to energy drinks, I definitely don't recommend them because of the risks associated with them and because evidence is still beginning, just beginning to accrue. So 10 years down the line, we may find that they're far more harmful than we thought.